everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I am making a video for you all about working with unspun yarn, specifically pencil roving, more specifically Nutiden, which is a yarn produced by Hörner Oak Air in Sweden and it is what I knit and designed this fluff nugget cardigan out of. I loved working with this so much and it was really different from anything else I've worked with before. So I wanted to talk to you about it and also my experience working with it. I have some tips for you if it's something you've never worked with before, but you should absolutely not be intimidated by trying it. Once you get the hang of it, it's actually quite easy to work with and just creates this amazing, fuzzy, light, but really, really warm fabric. So let's get started. Of course, the first thing you should do when you start a new project is always swatch. And this is also a really good way to just get to know the yarn that you're working with. And I made lots and lots of swatches also because this was a design. So I experimented with making some stockinette swatches. This one was with it held single. And this was with it held double, which is what I ended up using. And if you're new to using this, I would definitely recommend holding it double. Um, it just makes it easier to work with, I found, and it also knits up faster, which is of course a benefit. <laughs> and then yeah, I started experimenting, of course, with knitting it in brioche. So I made a couple different swatches in different gauges to see how it would knit up. I ended up making this at quite an open gauge. Um, I'm getting 10 stitches per 10 centimeters, which is, yeah, quite open, like I said. So it knits up really fast, even though it is brioche, so you do every row twice. Um, but it's still super, super lightweight. So my version um, is under 300 grams. I think when I weighed it without the buttons, now I can check, I think. No, it's not in this. So I do recommend just playing around with it a little bit and seeing what you can get. If you are not able to get your paws on Nutiden, they have limited updates that do tend to sell out. Um, first of all, you should follow Hörner Oak Air over on Instagram and then you'll find out when all the updates are. Um, but if you can't get it or if it's not available to you geographically or you don't want to order from Europe, uh, something that seems to be more widely available because it's produced more on an industrial level, I believe, is um, Plotolopi by Iztex in Iceland. They're the same people that make Letlopi, and also Letlopi worked at this gauge, I tried it. But um, yeah, so I also got some of that and tested it out. I also <laughs> made some swatches holding it single in stockinette. Um, I tried it held double in brioche, and I also did an experiment holding it um, double but marling it um, and yeah it is similar ish it's a bit more dense from what I can tell and also I would say more wooly a little bit more scratchy if you've worked with Icelandic wool before you'll probably know what I'm talking about I believe the fiber content is the same as Lutlopi um, and there are other blends um, but yeah it's also an economical option that's probably more readily available to you if you can't get new to then, which I just recommend because it's so wonderful. So to do a little comparison, new to then comes in plates that look like this. They are more or less 100 grams. And Plotolopi comes like this. It's a little flatter, but it should also be about 100 grams. So yeah, that's the difference there. But another difference is how um, Hrona Oak Air makes their colors, which is by leaving some of it natural sometimes, and then also dyeing big batches, which they also do in this old school way, like outside in this big, I think it's like cast iron, like cauldron over a fire. It's amazing. <laughs> they put this on their Instagram all the time, and then they card different colors together. So you get this like really rich, um, yeah, kind of varied color. For this one, I know that there was some natural gray, I believe, some oranges and some green, actually. So yeah, it looks different in different lights. Um, and it's just like a really nice, rich, beautiful thing. 
I am going to knit another one and I'm going to do it in this color, which was in their February update. And oh my gosh, it is just going to be a sweater of sunshine. It's going to be so amazing. Okay, so let's talk about actually knitting with this. <laughs> the first thing that you will notice and that you may have heard um, is that it's kind of delicate and a bit breakable, definitely more breakable than most other spun yarns. So what that means is that I'll just show you here, I'm tugging on it very gently, nothing happens, but when I put a bit more pressure, it will come apart. This will probably happen to you several times by knitting. Also, if you tug on it too hard, it happened when my cats came and sort of did stuff. But it's really not a problem because all you have to do is kind of squish it back together here. Just overlap it a bit. You could, eat, you can spin it a little bit like that and then you just keep going. And you might be wondering, hey, like doesn't this make a fabric that's really breakable? And no, and this is why. Basically, the fibers here are quite long. I don't know if you'll be able to see it here, but I'll try to put in a clip. Um, and it's very fluffy. It has a big halo. I'm not a spinner, so I don't know a lot about this, but um, it has to do with the staple length or just the length of the fibers themselves. So while if I hold it far apart, it breaks, like I showed you, that was the same spot. If I hold it really, like, if I hold my fingers close together, I am pulling as hard as I possibly can and it's not breaking. This little area that I'm doing is wider than any of your stitches would be. So that's just to tell you that your sweater isn't gonna fall apart. Um, it's really not that delicate. Once it's knit up, it's a really strong, resilient fabric. So one thing I had to get used to was actually how to get it off of the cake. And I knit this again, held double, so I just had two cakes or plates going and just found that when I needed more slack, I couldn't just tug on it like I could with most yarns, um, but instead, I just sort of unraveled it like this. A lot of times I found it was easier to have it on the floor or somewhere below me so that it was kind of easier to get it off like this. So I did this, I think, for um, the entire body and one of the sleeves. Um, I'll talk about this, I think, in a future video. I seamed my cardigan together inside out and didn't notice until after I'd finished the sleeve, so I had to rip out the sleeve and everything. And after that, um, when I ripped out the sleeve, I wound, which was pretty easy actually to frog back. I was worried about breakage, but it really didn't do that. Again, it kind of like, once you knit it up, I think it smushes to itself. But when I ripped it out, I then wound it by hand into a ball. And I found that working from it this way was so much easier. So after I re-knit the sleeve, I decided for the other sleeve and for the button band that I was going to hand wind balls um, yeah, off of the plates in order to do that. And this just made the actual knitting faster. Of course, I had to take up extra time to do this, but then I could just pull from the ball, the ball would roll naturally and it went a bit faster. So um, feel free to try both ways and see what works best for you. But I found that at least for the way that I knit that that was more comfortable and faster in the end. So there's a little pro tip for you. Something else that I found really useful for this was at certain points in this sweater and in many sweaters, um, you need to do some seaming, weave in some ends, do a sewn bind off. I am a huge fan of a tubular bind off. Well, it's a sewn bind off. It takes a long time and I know not everyone wants to do it, but um, for me, especially when I'm designing something, I really love putting in that extra time. Um, it just creates such a nice edge. Um, but what you need to do for that is have a really long tail and then sew through all of these stitches. And I did find that with a yarn this delicate, that was challenging. Um, I did manage it in the end. Some of my testers found that it just kept breaking on them and they did another bind off, which is completely fine. It's just a suggestion in the pattern. But what I found helpful to do is actually to felt it a little bit. I just did it by using friction in my hands. You could also put some water or bit on it um, because moisture also helps felting. But I just took, granted I was taking the two strands I was using, 
rubbed it really vigorously between my hands and then just sort of kept moving down, doing that, doing that, and it just makes it a lot stronger. So now I'm pulling on the section that I just did, for example, and I'm not able to pull it apart. I had to really apply a lot of pressure, I would say similar to what I would have to apply to break by hand a normal spun yarn. Um, so that really helped me a lot to be able to do that. Um, yeah, the other option, if you are a spinner, if you have a spinning wheel or I guess a hand spindle, uh, no, a drop spindle <laughs> is what they're called. Can you tell I'm not a spinner? My understanding is that you can also spin this. And I know that my friend Kat, who is the Olive Trees in the Moon, who test knit this for me, um, she, before she knew she was gonna test knit, had experimented with spinning some of the yarn and she actually ran out of the unspun and used the yarn that she had spun for the button band, I believe. So yeah, it's totally possible to spin it a little bit if that makes it easier to work with. But again, I am not a spinner. I do not have a spinning wheel and it went completely fine for me. So you can do it, don't be afraid. It's actually very cool and it's just a different experience. And yeah, it just, the smell of it is so good. They intentionally leave a lot of lanolin in the yarn, um, which also just makes it so wonderful. I really just can't say enough about this yarn. I am so excited to use it, use it more. Um, I also wanna mention that you could hold it double with other things. Again, a couple of my testers did this. Some people held it double as I did and then also added a strand of Surrey alpaca or mohair. Um, and I did this on a swatch. Where is it? It's on my lap. I just practiced this on a swatch with some mohair that I had because I think this is something I'm going to design in the future, but you can kind of see what that looks like. Um, and this is what they all looked like held together. So again, that just gives you another option of something that you have available to you. And for me, this is gonna be a really cool option because I, and for me, this is going to be a really cool option because I actually have another sweaters quantity left of this color that I used, um, which is crazy, but we, we just way overestimated what I would need. Um, in brioche, I usually overestimate a lot because since you technically knit every row twice, I just thought it would eat yarn. But in the end, I think this is probably the lightest sweater that I own, even though I knit it in basically the equivalent of like a heavy fingering held double. It's, it's crazy, again, it makes no sense. But also because of that, um, the cost is relatively low for knitting a sweater like this. Um, I can tell you that the pricing of this yarn I don't have it in my head, but I will put on the screen what the current uh, price range is in Swedish Krona, I believe. It, the price can vary a little bit depending on how much dyed fiber is in it because of course that takes more work. Um, but I believe it works out at the current exchange rate as I'm filming this to about 14 to 16 euros per plate. And I've worked out in the pattern for this how many plates that you need and yeah, it's actually super affordable. So yeah, I used three, granted this is the smallest size. So that was about, what, 45 euros-ish, not counting shipping of course. Um, and the largest size that I designed, I believe uses seven. So yeah, that would be, you know, a little over a hundred euros which still isn't crazy and that is like the largest largest size I would say the average is between four and six so yeah it's really not expensive at all to knit yourself a sweater in this amazing yarn and supporting an amazing small business what they do is just so cool using really local wool dyeing it all themselves doing things in a really traditional way without any chemicals really awesome. So I really encourage you to check them out. Their next update for March is on March 21st, 2021. And yeah, if you want to check them out, you can. They also have a Patreon. Um, 
where Carolyn records beautiful podcasts and she talks so much more about the yarn and the colorways and how they came up with anything. So if you're really interested in that process, I encourage you to check that out as well. And if you would like to knit this pattern, it is being released on March 17th, again, 2021, that is the year right now. <laughs> However, it is available right now early access on my Patreon to my tiers three and four. Tier three is 10 euros and tier four is 15 euros. Um, they have slightly different perks, but both of them you can get this and the full price of the pattern is 15 euros. So you're actually getting it early and saving five euros and getting a bunch of Patreon perks what could be better than that? It's a no brainer. So that will all be linked down below. I will also link the Ravelry and Pay Have links when it's released. Um, so yeah, I hope that I inspired you to try something new if you haven't tried it before. This amazing, amazing, amazing yarn. I love it so much. I love this sweater. It's getting so much wear and yeah, I hope that you all want to make a fluff nugget out of Newton yourselves. Um, so yeah, please feel free to also follow me on social media. I'm Soprano Knits over on Instagram. Tag me if you're making the sweater and if you use this yarn, I would love to see it. Um, and yeah, leave a comment below letting me know if you've ever used unspun yarn before and what your experience was like. I would love to hear about it. And I will talk to you all soon in the next video. Bye!